Switch into art this morning. My next guest, she is local artist Deborah Goldman. Now her work includes site-specific sculpture and painted wooden constructions. I've had Deborah on the show before, and it is a pleasure having her back again this morning. Deborah, thank you for being here. Oh, with thank me. you. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Now, Deborah, you have had a lot of promotion with some of your shows and your work recently, so you really wanted to focus today on just art in general. That's so, right. Let's start this morning by talking about, you know, we as humans, we have the desire and the impulse to create art, don't we? You know, why, why do we have this desire? Why, why is this something that we feel we have to do? Well, it's a, I think it's a great question because, sp especially after just having finished a body of work for a show, now I have time to reflect and ask myself, why, why do I do this? But there's been this desire, I think, forever. I think humans have a desire somehow to be able to communicate in a nonverbal way about some of the deeper sensations, feelings, ideas, whatever they, they experience that words aren't adequate to express, and maybe even um, pre-language. And I, I mentioned to you earlier in the day when we were talking about the cave paintings in Spain. Those are sometimes cited as evidence of decorative art that humans, cavemen, were painting bison on the walls of the caves to have decoration. But it's also considered that maybe that was a way to communicate. And I think that that is really the key to communicate about um, their experience. And in this case, bison and, you know, getting hunting for bison and being successful in the hunt was very important. So whether it was a religious impulse, mm -hmm. a spiritual one, or strictly a, a mathematical one, that they were counting how many. The, the desire is strong and continues, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. continues. I mean, we're, we're still doing it. We're mm -hmm. doing it very differently. It's evolved so much, hasn't it? Yes, it has. In mm -hmm. fact, um, what's of interest to me is that the object, per se, has become less important, at least in my work, and the idea behind the object mm -hmm. is much, much more important. And, um, an example of, you cited, said that I do um, site-specific earthworks. Robert Smithson in the 70s did a wonderful piece called The Spiral Jetty. He did that in Utah. And it was, you know, sculpt, men sculptors tend to be very macho. And uh, I showed that film at the Tropic a few years ago, and I had never seen it myself. I was shocked to see this heavy equipment and how, but essentially he moved stones into the shape of a spiral in this body of water in Utah. Well, how many people could actually go to see it? Mm -hmm. So the only way that people had the experience of it was either by seeing the film or the photographs that he took. And so it, those were the vestiges of the idea. Um, and that, in a way, becomes the art itself. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that's definitely influenced my thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, a lot of your pieces, they do, they have messages behind them, don't they, Deborah? That's they have a, true. They have a story, and you have some new pieces this morning, in fact, that have powerful stories behind them. Well, thank you. Could you share one of those yeah, stories? Yeah, I have. Uh, actually, when I started this body of work, I was thinking about um, dried flowers mm -hmm. and how flowers as they dry are a perfect metaphor for a life passage. Mm -hmm. And um, I found this quotation about how to dry flowers, which to me I thought was rather inane, but was also a metaphor. And, and in, one of the things that it says is, use only the most perfect forms, because poor shapes dry as poor shapes. Use only flowers free of insect and disease, Damage becomes only more obvious after drying. <laughs> so it, you can read, you know, yeah. beneath the surface mm -hmm. on that, and that, that's what I did. Then it says, do not consider dried flowers everlasting. Preferably, they should be replaced yearly, but with good care, 
think about your skin. They <laughs> often last longer. Even the best dried flowers gradually fade and should be discarded when they no longer produce the desired effect. Oh, no. So think about the much <laughs> older generation right. of people. Here we are with, with health care, and mm -hmm. people are saying, oh, there are going to be uh, health care um, juries that are going to say, okay, you can't, you can't live anymore. Mm -hmm. It's over for you. And we're facing those issues, and I think about that when I'm working on my art. That's something, and it's beautiful, Deborah. It's oh, beautiful, the, the final project. Oh, and, thank you. So I, I, I thank you for sharing it. your work this morning. And people can check out your work right now at Lucky Street Gallery. That's right. There's a show that includes three artists, A.D. Tinkham, Ashley Benton, and myself. And it's up through April 4th. And I really um, strongly suggest that anyone who can you should go see it because it's a very interesting show. Mm -hmm. And you know what I love, though, again, Deborah, I think it's important to understand the messages behind your work, too, because everything that you create, it does have a message behind there. So do you include, with your pieces of work, do you include um, the sayings or the... Yes, yes actually, okay. there, mm -hmm. this piece called When the Mandrake Shrieked, mm -hmm. you can see that I actually have the, the information of this story, a, a medieval notion of what um, botany was about. Mm -hmm. And they're actually on there. And they, they look, I form them so that they have a relationship to the flowers themselves. Mm -hmm. And they serve in a way like a vessel for the flowers. But mm -hmm. they're also a kind of a poetry and um, create a counterpoint to mm -hmm. the floral image. Great. Well, thank you again for being on this morning.